Welcome back everyone, this is Arafel and playing Magical Bring Corona, and this time we have the end boss of the Subaru route. Which of course is none other than Playa herself. As usual, Playa has the speed advantage. As usual, again, she is also rather... Well, not fragile exactly, but has lower defense than is typical. So in a way, that kind of balances out. But she does still hit fairly hard. And if you're coming into this at max difficulty, which I'm probably pretty close to, then you need to hit her 170 time, 179 times to win, which is significantly less than the 500 you need for Yuka. But if you get hit 11 times from her normal attacks, you lose. So blocking is important. Another thing about fighting Playa in this game that they did not rehash for the second game because of how they changed the way special round determination works is the concept for your energy bar charging this game is a serious kind of leeching magic off of the opponent when hitting. Thing is, Playa's power is not magic, it's nanotechnology. She has no magic to leech from. So, rather than charging at the default rate of 1% per hit, it takes 4 hits to charge 1%. So, your energy meter pretty much doesn't charge. I mean, it does a little bit, but it's so little it's pretty insignificant. It takes basically forever to get to that 30% threshold where... Yeah, the 30% threshold where the eye turns red and uh, enter attacks become a factor. So you can pretty much ignore your energy gauge for this battle in every battle where you fight Playa. She does have enough health here that you can get enough of a charge where you might see that special energy attack. But it takes a while. And instead of taking 30 hits to get there, you need 120. That takes a while. And by the time you get to 120, she's pretty far down on health. Uh, the other th interesting thing about this battle, and a lot on the later part of the player route, is you will never use Corona Desperado, only Corona Blaster. It turns out, especially fighting Playa, this is a net advantage, because the main benefit of Corona Desperado as compared to Blaster is that it charges your energy meter. With your energy meter barely charging, the extra hits and therefore extra damage in Corona Blaster make it much more beneficial. So here's Thunder Discharge. This is again very similar to what it is in the second game. Where you have the uh, stuff packed together coming at you pretty quickly. I think I basically started going too soon there, rushed it a bit too much. Uh, the nice thing about Thunder Discharge is it actually does significantly less damage than her normal attack. Oh, less damage per hit, anyway. If the whole thing hits you, then you're going to take some hurt, but... Missing one or two hits is not as big a deal as if you miss the same one or two hits in her normal attacks. But this... This is farewell, she says. Seventh bit... Final. This is a mess. Although maybe not quite as bad as I remembered. But still, it's a mess. You've got stuff coming up from both sides. They jump back and forth from side to side, flipping across the target point. They'll change orientation on you as they're approaching. Uh, the other interesting thing about that attack is that Oh, it's normal as your difficulty increases for enemy attacks and special attacks to start getting more hits. Uh, the interesting thing about that particular attack is the number of hits it has will always be a multiple of 7. So it's either 14 or 21. Uh, 
fish. He will use that automatically after Kern is fourth turn. Right, she uses that automatically after Corona's fourth turn, and then it's added to her options for special attacks for the rest of the battle. Up until that point, she will only use Baltic Blade and Thunder Discharge. Oh, here's another blaster. And yeah, if you watch the Yuka battle, you will notice that Playa's health is going down much more quickly. Her speed advantage is frustrating, but it's not as bad as it is in Corona 2. Uh, there is one battle in this game earlier on where she has Speed X3, which is an actual doubled speed like it is, like Speed X2 is in Corona 2. But for the most part, she's only 50% faster. Yeah, like I said, that's just that's just a mess. Especially when there's a lot coming in at once, it's difficult to keep track of it all. And that's the point, it's meant to overwhelm you. Here's another blaster. At this point I'm probably going to lose, although I guess it's possible I could guard better. As usual, the nice thing about fighting Playa is that because it's all about speed, the battle doesn't last that long regardless. You either lose very quickly or you win very quickly. And difficulty is high enough that normal attacks are coming through with a lot of speed, but it's not so much that it's really that much of a problem. It's really only her special attacks that are a threat. Unlike Yuka, where you have your target point shifting around, and unlike Noelle, where you have chaotic speeds. Even at the highest possible difficulty, Playa's normal attacks are fast, but nothing weird happens. They're straightforward. Ah, here we go, Voltic Blade. Rakate needs... Both it played. Yeah, 7th bit final is basically a souped up Baltic Blade coming at you from both sides. With all the same tricks. It's just that anything that comes from both sides is that much worse to deal with. So yeah, if I don't pull out a win here, I'm going to use Survivor. And I think I'll just speed up the second time through. Yep, there's Subaru being stubborn. And she does not want to lose to Corona in particular. Anyway, the play of final battle music is used only for this battle, of course. But parts of it are remixed into her heroic theme in the play of chapter of Corona 2. And I did those backwards. So once more into the breach, we use Survivor. Sailed after a phoenix, of course.
Well, the battle is winding down, so I think I'll go back to normal speed at this point to see what's going on here. Seventh Pit Final with the difficulty drop is significantly less chaotic. You still have the chips jumping back and forth, but they're not changing orientation, they're not changing timing at all. You just see which order they're coming in, deal with them in that order, and it's not so bad. If you have the jumping around combined with the changing orientation, that's a lot to deal with. If you take off the orientation change, it suddenly becomes a lot more manageable. And this might be enough to finish off the battle. Nope, not quite. Looks like one more attack round. As the MP3 hits its end. Oops. And let one attack slip through there. I can go up with that. Yeah, Playa is kind of a glass cannon. Hits hard, but does not have much durability. She's far more durable in this battle than she normally is. And the battle is over, except it isn't quite. Here's Yuka telling Kuroda to be a friend to Subaru, or Yoshi yumi -san. Same person. Here's Kuroda talking to her uncle, who is telling her to... Yoroshiku no Daishimasu doesn't really translate well, but it's basically saying look after her. There's Subaru talking about how she swore she wouldn't cry, wouldn't lose to anyone. And then you have this. But remember, enter attacks are always optional. If you choose to hit that, Corona destroys Playa's headband, which destroys the Playati system, which leads to a downer ending. If you don't destroy it, then play is left going, why? You could have finished me off with that. Are you mocking me? And Karina just says, let's meet again in school tomorrow. And that leads pretty well into... Especially the play story of Kurna 2. But for now, this has been Arafelon playing Magical Bring Kurna. Come back next time when we will face the most challenging opponent in the game. But if we're lucky, get to use the most powerful special attack in either game. Hope to see you then.